Hi, I'm Danielle with Put a Finish on It. If you're a writer looking for an editor, let me know. I'm here today with my January 2016 wrap up. I read five books in January. The first was a 80s YA reread from my adolescence called Between Dances, Maggie Adams' 18th Summer by Karen Strickler Dean. This is a dance novel and it's the second in a trilogy. I reread it in preparation for finally reading the third book. Maggie's 18 and she has to choose between a dance career or doing something practical like learning shorthand. And also her boyfriend visits from college and he's always sort of discounted her desire to have a career in dance. Pretty simple and kind of frustrating storyline, pretty dated and not the best. Then I finally got to read the third book in the trilogy called Stay On Your Toes, Maggie Adams. And after the second one, I didn't have high hopes for this. And honestly, it was pretty terrible. Maggie is now 19, living in San Francisco, trying to make it as a dancer, and it just rehashes all the same plots that were in the first and second book. I then moved on to a more recently released YA novel, Under a Painted Sky by Stacey Lee. I was excited to read about a Chinese American girl and a runaway slave girl trying to make it out west on their own. They disguise themselves as boys and run into a band of cowboys who are also trying to go out west for the gold rush. Turns out I just don't like cowboy stories. You know, there's jokes and bets and arm wrestling. Not my kind of thing. The author also doesn't shy away from the darker side of life back then. There's killing of both humans and animals just because that's the way things had to be. There's target practice on snails, which pretty much turned my stomach. And it just wasn't the story for me. I decided to turn my attention to some nonfiction and read the memoir Funny and Farsi Growing Up Iranian in America by Firuza Duma. And I really enjoyed this author's writing style. She's really funny and sarcastic and has some great memories of her childhood growing up in Southern California in the 70s. And also she had the experience of being Iranian in the United States during the hostage crisis, which was a very interesting perspective and very much still relevant unfortunately. She did kind of jump around chronologically, which I find unsettling when I'm trying to read a memoir and have a complete picture of the person's life. Well, not complete, but at least however much they're sharing. Even though she did jump around, I still really enjoyed it and I look forward to reading the sequel, Laughing Without an Accent. The final book I finished in January was Warriors Don't Cry by Melba Patil Beals. In 1957, Melba Patil Beals became one of the Little Rock Nine, one of nine black students to integrate Little Rock's Central High School. This battle to integrate the high school wasn't only a fight between the governor of Arkansas and the federal government, it was a battle the entire school year between those nine students and the 2,000 white students in this high school. Melba kept a very articulate journal from the time, which she shares parts of in the memoir. And I always find that fascinating to be able to have access to the record of her thoughts at the time. And I just highly recommend this memoir to everyone. Those are all five books I read in January. Thanks for watching.